Hey, what's up everybody? This is Kelly Berry from Kelly Berry Media here today. I wanted to give you my review of the late 2014 model iMac 5K. Uh, this is a computer that's been around for a little while now. It's been around for six months, um, but I haven't seen too many reviews out there that focus mostly on uh, the workflow of a creative. I mean, everybody pretty much that's purchasing this computer, uh, for the most part at least, is probably going to be some sort of creative, some sort of videographer, photographer, graphic designer, somebody that likes to see uh, dynamic imagery and see their images pop off the screen. And that's what this 5K display really shines at. Um, the, uh, the original iMac was no slouch whatsoever, but this one really steps it up. And, and especially if you combine that with the performance that you receive out of the computer with the specs that I receive, or with the specs that I uh, have inside the computer, it's just the perfect computer for me. And I think it's the perfect computer for anybody that's looking to have speed and resolution. So my version of the uh, iMac 5K that I received uh, has the four gigahertz Intel Core i7 quad core Haswell processor in it with turbo boosting up to 4.4 gigahertz. This is the upgraded CPU for this computer, and the reason I purchased this one, which is an additional $200, I believe, over the standard i5, is it's just going to give you better performance. If you're working with a lot of huge files, uh, a lot of high-res things, um, you just want performance, and the i7 line of CPUs is definitely the way to go. Um, as for the uh, the RAM, I purchased this directly from B&H Photo um, with the eight gigabytes of DDR3, which I immediately, once I got the computer at home, um, swapped out for 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I purchased that off Amazon. Uh, it's Crucial, which is uh, the company that uh, the, that makes the RAM, and uh, and I couldn't be happier. It saved me about a hundred dollars, somewhere around there, over if I purchased it directly from Apple. Um, you know, with 16 gigabytes, and I believe if you go up to 32 gigabytes, you can save up to like four hundred dollars um, by going with Crucial or someone similar to that versus purchasing it directly from Apple. The hard drive in this computer is the 256 gigabyte solid state drive. I chose that versus the uh, one terabyte fusion drive because um, for speed, that's what it comes down to. Uh, they're both the same price. Um, the one terabyte fusion drive is a whole lot more space, but I would rather have speed than storage. I really don't store too many things on the computer itself other than the programs. Um, as you can see back here, I have uh, my whole array of drives uh, that contain all of my content, my photos, my videos, my documents, anything that I'm going to be working with is not on the computer itself, it's actually on the drive. Now anybody purchasing this computer, uh, if you're a videographer, is probably going to be going for the AMD Radeon M295X GPU with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5. Uh, I just have to say that if you're a videographer, you're going with the upgraded video card because that's what it's all about uh, in terms of uh, video. It's obviously a combination of the RAM, the CPU, the GPU, and the hard drive, but um, you know it, it really makes, in this day and age, uh, a good video card is really good for, uh, for performance when you're working with big video files. So um, definitely it's worth the $200 to upgrade to that versus the two gigabyte AMD variant. That being said, if you're not a videographer, I could see a lot of people not going for the upgraded graphics card and just sticking with the uh, standard card and saving themselves $200. Um, you know, if you're not working with a ton of big video files, you might not need it and you could save yourself a whole lot of money. So in this review, I thought I would do a few uh, real world things. If you're a photographer, a videographer, a graphic designer, or all of the above, you're gonna be looking for the performance out of all of the Adobe programs. So I thought I would run through um, you know, how it works on, the, on Premiere, on Photoshop, and on Lightroom, which are the big three, I guess. Um, there's a lot of other programs, but I thought I would just focus specifically on those. Okay, so let's kind of go through uh, a standard workflow that some of you might be uh, doing out there. Um, so I wanna start with Premiere here. And uh, as you can see, Premiere opens pretty quick. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that have to be opened, uh, but with that solid state drive, it just makes things a whole lot quicker. So let's just open this project. This is actually the project that you're uh, watching and listening to right now. And uh, I just kind of want to show you a few examples as to, uh, you know, just a proper workflow. So as you can see, this is a bunch of high res uh, content. Um, this video was shot at 24p. Um, XAVC on the Sony CX900 camcorder. Um, it's actually a pretty sweet little camcorder. I will be doing a review on that. It's not the 4K version, but I have to say it's a sweet little camcorder. Uh, very good in low light. 
and uh, I'll be reviewing that. But uh, back to the editing. So, um, as you can see, I'm scrubbing through this high res video, and as you can see here, it's at full. So, I mean, it's not at quarter, um, which reduces the, the preview resolution. I'm at full, and if I just press the space bar, it's running all the way through without uh, without any issues. And if I scrub, going over these uh, other video files, which these were shot with my Sony A7 II and the Loxia 50 millimeter in XABC as well, um, you can see that it's pretty seamless. I mean, just the scrubbing and the playing is mostly on the workflow of. It's all real time. You don't have to wait for anything. And that's what I was looking for when it comes to uh, video editing is I don't have to wait. I'm an impatient person when it comes to everything. And if I have to wait to render anything, um, I just go bonkers. And there are still a few things that you will have to wait for to render. Um, there's certain effects that do not have this accelerated effects, um, but the majority of the ones that I use are accelerated. Uh, I think a lot of them end up being here some of my often used ones. I've created a little folder. Uh, the brightness and contrast is an accelerated effect, I believe. Um, fast color corrector, sharpen, those kind of things are all accelerated effects. So if I were to put the fast color corrector and the brightness and contrast on there and I start fiddling with it, it I actually had that on there already, um, but it just goes a whole lot faster. Um, so let's just, I'll show you an example as to what would happen if I turn this off. And this is something, if you have, you know, a lesser MacBook Pro, um, one that does not have the dedicated graphics card, you'll be noticing this. So uh, as, when you get a, a, an iMac or any computer for that matter that has a, a graphics card, uh, I believe AMD and NVIDIA, I'm sure a bunch of them work and I know there's workarounds to get them to work. Um, but if you have that, you have this option for Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration. And on a Mac, it's OpenCL. If you're using an NVIDIA card, you'll have the CUDA version, but I've found in my MacBook Pro that there's some issues with that. And uh, OpenCL is usually better for your Macs. So if you turn that off, I wanna show you exactly what happens. You'll get this uh, notification saying that video rendering and playback settings are going to be changed and um, there's issues, so I'm just gonna say keep previews for the time being, but look at my entire timeline. It just went red. Everything in here went red. And why is that, you ask? Well, there's a lot of things. See, I have brightness and contrast, I have sharpen, I have fast color corrector all turned on. These are effects, and uh, when you're using effects within your timeline, the majority of the time you need to render all that stuff if you're not using a uh, graphics card that's dedicated to making that um, work properly. So if I were to press return here to render all that, you'll see there's 7,172 frames that need to be rendered. One by one it has to go through rendering all of that. And the estimated time, it's about two minutes. This is again the uh, Intel i7, 4 gigahertz with turbo boost up to 4.4. Uh, so it's no slouch, but this is pretty much, um, correct me if I'm wrong, coming all straight off the CPU instead of letting that GPU help out and render all of this in real time. So I'm not going to wait for that. This is going to take forever, and that's just to preview it. I mean, that's uh, you have to render it before you export it, so uh, not a big fan of that. And that is a big reason why I purchased this uh, computer with the updated graphics card. It is just built to do this. It's built to go fast and to get your get your work done as quickly as possible. So let's just oh, turn back on the uh, GPU acceleration, utilizing the graphics card. Say so keep previews and watch that timeline. It went from rendered or unrendered to completely rendered. So I can just play that in real time if I ever want to. Uh, okay, let's say I'm done with this project. Go to export media, and uh, you know, pretty much good to go. And uh, just go over to Q real quick, send it over to uh, the media encoder. And you'll also notice this here. So when you're exporting something out of your media encoder, I think this also works for uh, Premiere, um, but you can change the option to go from your GPU acceleration or to software only, which is gonna slow it down, uh, but it still works. I mean, you know, and I've noticed uh, on my MacBook Pro that there's some issues with the uh, graphics card still after a year of owning that that uh, computer, 
So a lot of the times I'll leave it in software only to render just or to export for just because there's some issues with it and sometimes it's it gets corrupted. So, but for this computer so far I've had no problems and I've been very ha happy with uh, the rendering uh, using utilizing the graphics card or the GPU. Okay, so let's uh, let's work with Lightroom here, and this is going to be kind of a combination approach of Lightroom and Photoshop. I want to show you a few things. This is the 2015 release, so the brand new. I think it just came out a few months ago, um, or not even a few weeks ago, actually. It's uh, it's pretty sweet. I haven't really noticed too many differences. I'm sure there's a bunch, but um, nothing crazy yet. Uh, so let's just kind of look at the proper workflow. I mean, if you're going to be looking at images in here, um, you know the the loading times. You'll notice uh, with these loading times, a lot of this it doesn't always have to do with just the computer itself. It doesn't always have to do with the CPU and with the GPU. It has to do with where your files are stored as well. And all of the files that I work with are actually stored off of my computer and on a, an external hard drive that then gets backed up to another external hard drive. And both of those are USB 3.0. I could have gotten the Thunderbolt version, which I believe are a little bit faster than USB 3.0, um, but I just, you know, it's, it was like $115 for these three terabyte, uh, three terabyte hard drives, so I just went with that. So let's just try a couple things. If you look and you notice, uh, you know, when you're just kind of scrubbing around, no issues whatsoever if the, uh, you know, if the image is properly loaded. Um, but at the same time, you do notice, see, loading and boom there we go so uh, it's not a seamless workflow but at the same time it's not that long and you're gonna find that with pretty much any computer depending on where and you know what kind of hard drive all of your images are stored on and I just have to say with this retina display you can't see it obviously because uh, you know you're not looking at the screen um, but I mean just the amount of clarity and detail that you receive when you're you're looking at your images it is just awesome I mean I can't say enough of this and this was shot with the uh, the uh, Sony a7 II with the Zeiss Loxia 50 millimeter at f2 uh, you can actually at f2.8 for this one uh, but I mean you can just see all this detail these cobwebs here I mean you wouldn't really see that if you had just kind of a standard screen or a lower res screen so I'm really happy with that so let's check out Photoshop here I'm gonna open up bridge and uh, find an image uh, this one has already been touched up a little bit using camera raw but let me open this up in Photoshop here real quick and once it's open, there you go. Um, it takes a few seconds to get that resolution to pop off the page. And, uh, but as you'll notice here that it has already been touched up a little bit and tweaked. So I'm gonna open this and there we go. So one of the tests that I've done in the past, and this is something that I always like to try on any computer that I get my hands on uh, that has Photoshop, is liquify and this isn't something that I use in my everyday workflow uh, because I mean it's there's, there's aren't too many times that I actually need it it's good for fashion photographers and, and editors that like to kind of push in uh, you know if somebody's a little bit heavier than they want them to be you know to push it in their sides or whatever so uh, let me just try this here and you'll notice that you know everything here is very seamless this is about a 25 megabyte raw file uh, and very, you know, very easy. You can just distort this image and distort the pixels. And in computers that I've worked with in the past, I mean, when you're doing this to a big file, it sits there and stutters and lags. But with this, uh, this 20, late 2014 iMac 5K with the i7 and, and the dedicated graphics card, uh, it's very seamless. So this is the big test here. When I click OK, normally sometimes this takes minutes. I mean, you just have to sit there and wait for it if you do something as crazy as distorting these pixels. So let me press the button. And as you just saw, I mean, it went very fast. I mean, it took seriously probably a second to render that image. And I can just go back to the way it was and you know, so this is a you know this is a crazy example, but this is definitely an example that shows uh, you know how quickly you can do various things that are usually pretty graphics intensive. Um, as I scrub around the image here, holding the space bar, um, no lag whatsoever. I mean, everything's very nice. Zooming in and out is just very quick and efficient. So let me use the healing brush to just do a couple things here. I zoom in and find a couple blemishes. These are just uh, you know some image some issues from bugs on the car I believe something like that just some co cosmetic things obviously not very uh, you know huge changes that you're making here um, but you know it, it just goes to show that just 
very, uh, you know, it just, it gets done really quick. And I'm very happy with that. If you were to do something, you know, it, this, when, when you're using this tool on very small things like these kind of issues, um, that's not very graphics intensive. But at the same time, let's say, uh, you know, you want to remove something that's a lot bigger. Let's just say this, it's not going to look right once I get this all said and done, but just a very big area like that usually will take a long time. And as you can see, it was that quick, boom. I mean, it was that quick to get that done. So overall, I've had this computer for about a week now, and I have to say that it definitely exceeds my expectations. Um, obviously, this is going to be a, an expensive computer if you're looking at it. I mean, just look at the price. It starts at $24.99. Um, but if you're looking for a computer that, that really has a small footprint, I mean, my, my previous computer, my PC was you know just the tower, and then you had the big displays and everything else that goes along with it. This is very compact. Um, and, and just it's very nice as you can see on my desk. It's just a, a very nice setup here So um, it's very nice. The uh, resolution of the display is amazing and the performance I receive out of it is, is definitely top-notch If you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below and as always make sure to subscribe and uh, thank you very much until next time